Here we go. Uh, good morning, uh, Principal Ahmed, fa faculty, staff, family members, and friends. And good morning and congratulations to the graduating class of 2013. It is an honor for me to be your commencement speaker. It was just 13 years ago that I was in the same seats that you are in now. Um, even though most of you were only five years old when I graduated from high school, I feel that I can still relate in many ways. Um, I still remember what it's, what it's like to be a high school student. For example, when uh, Principal Ahmed contacted me three months ago about uh, being the commencement speaker, I immediately sat down, I went to my desk, opened my laptop, and I spent three months procrastinating on Facebook until I started working on my speech last night. <laughs> now, after 13 years since my graduation, I'm supposed to be in a position to give you advice on beginning your journey into adulthood. This is a heavy task. I wasn't sure exactly what to say. I honestly don't even remember if we had a commencement speaker when I graduated. I, like many of you, are preoccupied with thoughts of how great it would feel to walk out of those doors with your diploma and step into the world as an adult. And trust me, it will feel great. But not remembering the possible inspiring words echoed through the graduation hall 13 years ago left me with no resource, no basis upon which I could reflect to conjure up words of encouragement for you. So, like anyone in the modern age, I started the preparation of my, seat, my speech by seeking inspiration from the only place I can imagine that would have the answers, Google. <laughs> Specifically, I went to YouTube. Um, as a side, I hope you recognize how fortunate you all are to be students in the information age where you have resources like Google, YouTube, and every student's favorite resource, Wikipedia. These things uh, did not exist to the extent that they do now when I was in high school, and the fact that I can tell a group of people that something they use on a daily basis did not exist when I was in high school makes me feel old. Um, even if Jay-Z says uh, 30 is the new 20, preparing for this speech reminded me to the fact that in reality I am 30 and now I'm old. But it's still great to be connected in this connected world, whether you're young or old. After high school graduation, you often grow apart from friends. Uh, but thanks to innovations like Instagram and Facebook, you are one click away from finding what the person you sat behind in Mr. Doherty's English class ate for breakfast. You are a generation that thinks Instagram and Facebook can be connected to everyone you have been to school with since kindergarten. Unfortunately, you're also a generation that had to deal with the horrors of your parents trying to friend request you on Facebook. <laughs> parents, uh, I'm afraid to tell you this, there isn't anything actually wrong with your child's friend confirm feature on Facebook. They just don't want to be your Facebook friends. <laughs> but don't fret, parents, because when your children try to move back home, as we all inevitably do, you can tell them that their old bedroom was converted to a Facebook friends-only room. <laughs> By uh, listening to other graduation speeches, I was better able to reflect on what it's like to be in your position right now, on graduation day, to remember what emotions you may be experiencing at the moment, happiness, excitement, relief, Graduation speeches tend to reflect off these anticipated emotions, and as such, most speeches are written around themes of hope, reaching for the stars, accomplishing all of your wildest dreams. So today, I wanted to help usher you into an adulthood with a memorable theme, one that will inspire and one that hopefully, unlike my high school graduation, one that you may actually remember. Today, I wanted to talk to you about failure. I know this isn't the upbeat, happy topic that you may have expected, but at the end, I hope you see the value in my message. Speaking about failure to a group of students graduating from the High School of Engineering and Science, I imagine is somewhat of a foreign subject. The mere fact that you lasted four years in a school that demands nothing less than excellence from its students implies that not only have you avoided failure to any significant degree, it also implies that you are already a success in your own right. You live in a city where one in three are likely to drop out of high school. 
Only one in three graduating high school students in Philadelphia enroll in college immediately after graduation. In 2012, the rate of people being shot in the city was one every six hours. And yet, here you all are, successful, accomplished, graduates. You have defied, that, that's worth a round of applause, actually. You have defied the odds before some of you were even old enough to vote. So what can I say, a 30-year-old student in the 25th grade, possibly tell a group of high achievers about how to start on a path to greater success and accomplishment? The reality is your path does not begin after you leave here. I do not need to start you on a path to greatness because you were already on that path long before you entered ENS. You all have had people rooting for you before you were even born. You each had mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, or guardians. Someone that put you on the path to be here before you could even walk. I was lucky to have a cousin, Gail, that put in the work to see me through high school. And you're all here today because of that same type of support. And I want you to look into the audience, give your family and supporters a round of applause for helping you get to this point. So now, I want to talk about what is waiting for you when you leave here. Failure. You all heard my bio before I began speaking. What you may not realize is that the summary of my accomplishments takes up less than one page in length. If I were to have a bio highlighting my failures, it would be at least five times longer. The reality is that failure has been a part of everyone's life. While the world's failure may have a negative connotation, what matters is whether or not you perceive the act of failing in a positive or negative way. The path to become a doctor is a long process fraught with opportunities for failure. I purposely use the word opportunity because I choose to treat my failures as instances upon which I can learn, I can grow, and I can teach. Some failures are small and appropriately classified as minor annoyances. Others, however, are significant and potentially life-changing. In the past 13 years, I've been at times confident and doubtful, enthusiastic and reluctant, optimistic and pessimistic. Difficulty with school, failed romantic relationships, lost friendships, these experiences are all a part of young adulthood. The important thing is that each time things seem bleak, I try again. Those that have never failed in life have never tried in life. To achieve any measure of greatness in life requires hard work, some degree of risk, and with effort and risk comes the potential for failure. If you treat these moments of failure as referendums on your self-worth or potential for greatness, you will undoubtedly miss the opportunities to better yourself. And I do, excuse me, after four years at ENS and a lifetime of learning ahead of you, you have the tools to minimize your failures. And I do encourage you to do your best to minimize them. But you can't completely avoid them. They'll use those experiences to your advantage. The only thing worse than treating failure as a negative is fearing the possibility of failure. Fear is a powerful emotion because if we let it, it will control our thoughts and ultimately our actions. Fear of failing in life puts, it, puts you on a path of least resistance, never challenging normal societal convention because the risk of failure is too high, never trying to correct past missteps because the risk of failure is too high, never committing to fully staying on the path to achieve one's dreams and aspirations because the risk of failure is too high. What happens when you fear failure? You live a life of convenience and redundancy. You go to school. You graduate, you get a job. You go through the daily cycle of waking up, going to school or work, sometimes both, going home, preparing for the next day, going to sleep and doing it all again. You repeat this until you're 65 or so and able to retire. You spend the rest of your days reflecting on how the fear of failure forced you to spend so many years stuck in a mundane routine. Achievement 
requires sacrifice, but happiness should not be one of the things you sacrifice. There's no point wasting the best years of your lives, investing time and energy into actions that provide a return on your investments that are not of any true value to you. I invested all of my adult life towards my goal of being a physician scientist. At times it was difficult. At Drexel there were not many people in my chemical engineering classes that looked like me. Hardly any from West Philadelphia, which is ironic because the school is in West Philadelphia. With a small minority presence and students from upper class families, I'm sure people at Drexel wondered how I even got there in the first place. By all accounts, I should not have been at Drexel on a full scholarship. I should have let one of my childhood obstacles keep me from starting on my path. The reason I got into Drexel and to where I am now is because I chose not to be a victim of circumstance. My circumstances included growing up in a middle class family, I never met my father, and my mother suffers from schizophrenia. I could have given up at any point, but I chose not to be a victim, I chose to persevere. With the help of family and mentors and overall supportive academic environment provided by Drexel, I chose to be better than my circumstances, I chose success over failure. In college and after college, you may find that there will be doors placed in your path and closed and locked in front of you. Doors will be closed because of your race. They may be closed because of your sex. They may be closed because of your sexual orientation. They may be closed because of where you grew up. They may be closed because of your accent. They may be closed because your last name is hard to pronounce. People will find new and innovative ways to put doors in your way. You must recognize that these doors can be open. My mother, who despite her condition, often gives subtle yet profound advice. I once asked her what's the key to life, and she replied to open the lock. The key to life is to open the lock. After four years of high school, we have a strong foundation of knowledge, and that knowledge is key, and perseverance is the hand with which you put that key in the lock and open the door. But don't expect I don't expect you to simply open the door. I want you to kick that door down and knock it off its hinges. Show the world that you will not be deterred. You will not be swayed. You will not let obstacles keep you from future opportunities. It's important that you let these doors open to opportunities that have value. Your time as young adults is a period of profound growth and development, but it's a relatively short period. Recognizing this limit in time and the importance of devoting yourself to using that time in meaningful and fulfilling ways was a lesson I learned early, and a difficult lesson. During my sophomore year of high school, I suffered the death of my younger sister, who at the time was five years old. Joy was born with a rare uh, disorder that caused many breathing problems for her, which ultimately led to her death. By anyone's standards, five years on this earth is a short time. But what I learned from Joy is that fulfillment in life is not directly determined by the length of time in this world, but rather by the impact we have on those in our world. Without a doubt, Joy impacted those with whom she interacted. The amazing thing about being a child with a debilitating medical condition is that their age never seems to let their uh, predicament impede their ability to find fulfillment in the present moment. Sure, fulfillment to a four-year-old primarily involves Barbie dolls and Dora the Explorer, but it's fulfillment nonetheless. As we accumulate failures in, throughout life, we begin to fear. We begin to dwell on the past and worry about the future. We expel energy into the things that take us away from doing the work towards success that the present moment requires. Having knowledge of past mistakes is important to avoid repeating them, and a thoughtful consideration for future challenges is essential. But remember to focus your sights on the present work that requires that the present work and requirements that will ultimately lead to your future success. When I talk about success, it is important how we define the word. Your family may have ideas of how they envision your future. Society and television may tell you success is defined by the size of your bank account and how fancy your car is. The benefit of being an adult is now you are in control. You define your success 
and you define for yourself what your goals are. Keep in mind that these goals will change over time. The person you are at 18 will not be the same person you are at 28. Your interests and aspirations will change, and with that, how you define success for yourself will change. As long as these changes are not motivated by fear of failure, change can and should be a positive part of your journey. I expect that many of you have, don't currently have well-formed definitions of what success means to you and are not entirely sure of your life goals. Your only goals may be to stay awake long enough to get through this graduation and out of this building, and that's okay. But as you progress through early adulthood, it's important that you identify role models to help you define success and set goals. Seek out those you aspire to be like. I was fortunate, I did not have to go very far to find a role model for my future goals. My uncle, Cato, is a physician scientist and one of the world's foremost experts in orthopedic surgery. He grew up in the heart of North Philadelphia. Aside from making what I think is the poor decision to go to Central High School, his background is no different than yours or mine. In college, I saw what he was doing. I said, I want to do that one day. He became the role model for my career aspirations. When I graduated with my Master of Science at Drexel, he took me to dinner. At dinner, I asked him what was the secret to his success. I was surprised when he simply said his success was due to two things, taking other people's advice and aiming high with his goals. Good thing for all of you, just by sitting here, you already accomplished the first thing. Uh, now all you have to do is aim high. It's important to note that he said take other people's advice, as in multiple people. You don't stop at finding one role model or mentor. It is up to you, it is up to you at this point, excuse me, up to this point, you did not have to work to build a supportive network around you. Much of that was already in place. At this stage now, you must begin to surround yourself with a network of people that will motivate and inspire you to be a better person. People that want to keep you along your path, to help you knock those doors down along your way. But don't underestimate your ability to be a mentor or role model to others. I'm sure that some of you have impacted individuals in your life whether you realize it or not. Younger siblings, cousins, neighborhood kids, you are all living examples of success that they can attain. Recognize the power and positive influence you can have on others even at this early stage in your life. The communities that you are from and the communities in which ENS exists needs role models, needs leaders, needs people to inspire future generations. Regardless of where your path takes you this year, be that inspiration for someone else. I am only here today because I care about seeing you all succeed. When you succeed, I succeed, and vice versa. Your success will pave the way for my younger brother to succeed. We are all connected thanks to shared backgrounds. Let your success and achievements be the link holding connections together and work to make the number of connections you influence grow without limits. As a scientist, I've always been amazed by a feature that's shared by all species on this planet. Every living being on this planet has an instinctive nature to stay alive. It is hardwired within our DNA that we avoid any elements that reduce our chance to exist. But to exist is not the same as to live. Existing is easy. Living requires hard work, commitment, and perseverance. I challenge you to take each day as an opportunity to live, not merely exist. Explore new opportunities. Stay open-minded. Engage with people of other backgrounds. See the world outside of your neighborhood. Take calculated risks. Make and keep meaningful relationships that extend beyond social media and text messages. Give back to your community. Mentor youth. Remember your accomplishments without resting on your laurels. Spend time with books to stimulate your mind and time away from popular entertainment that often does nothing more than perpetuate stereotypes and promote ignorance. (laughs) 
if you build a supportive group of mentors around you, I can be sure that I will not be the last person to try and encourage you to reach your goals. However, I have found that what is often lacking are reminders to stay physically healthy, practice financial responsibility, and be kind to others. I will end with a quote from Dr. Benjamin Mates, who was the past president of Morehouse College and the mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It must be born, he said, in the mind that the tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It is not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideal, but it is a disaster to have no ideal to capture. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars. It is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Not failure, but low aim is sin. Aim high, graduates. Aim high. Thank you.